Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Samantha and I make videos on minimalism, productivity and intentional living. So over the last year and a half, I have embraced minimalism and the journey has been truly life-changing. So today I wanted to share with you 50 minimalist habits to try today if minimalism is something that you're interested in and you want to embark on your own personal journey. Track your spending. This is one of the first things that I did. I created a spreadsheet where I logged what I spent every day. I found that categorizing my expenditures helped identify the areas where I overspent. I was shocked to realize how much money I spent on food and gifts. This led me to drastically cut down on my food budget and it made me plan ahead for occasions where I knew I wanted to give someone special a gift. Embark on periodic no buys. A no-buy is a challenge where someone commits to not spending any money on non-essentials. People make their own rules and the aim is to cut back, save money and adopt a more simple way of life. I began my low-buy, no-buy lifestyle over a year and a half ago and the original plan was to do it for just a year. But I'm still going strong because I love all the benefits it's brought me. I have saved over £40,000, I no longer feel compelled to buy things that I can't comfortably afford and I just have less stuff and clutter around me which makes for more mental clarity. Get rid of multiples of the same photo on your phone. With mobile phones and their substantial storage capacity, it can be so easy to get caught up in taking multiple photos of the same thing in order to catch the perfect image for Instagram and Facebook. But if you have too many of the same photos and they build up in your photo gallery, it can be stressful to go through and organize them. Make it a habit to purge multiples of the same photo in your phone and just keep the one you most prefer. It's best to just deal with the multiples within a day or two of you taking the images and that way you'll stay on top of your digital clutter. Digitize your photos. Physical photos are great to have and go through if you want a trip down memory lane, but you could lose those precious memories if you don't create backups. Take the time to digitize your old photos. You can keep the originals or even discard them if digital copies are enough for you. Keep your workspace tidy. Where you sit down to work should be calm and clutter-free so you can be at your most productive. Get into the habit of clearing up your workspace at the end of the day so when you sit back down the next morning you feel refreshed and ready for the day ahead and not stressed out by yesterday's clutter. Organise your computer desktop. While I personally don't find digital clutter as stressful as physical clutter, I still find it a really useful exercise to keep my computer desktop clean and I will periodically delete and organise my files. This ensures that I'm able to access whatever I need quickly and it also ensures that my computer runs at optimum levels. Streamline your wardrobe. There is something very rewarding about wearing every item in your wardrobe and getting a good cost per wear out of all your garments and shoes. At the beginning of my minimalism journey, I decluttered my wardrobe and ultimately reduced down my items to approximately 77 items. I created videos around both those topics and I'll link those videos in the cards above and in the description below. Lots of minimalists also practice capsule wardrobes where they interchange their items and create multiple different looks from core pieces. Use boxes as separators and dividers in your drawers. This is definitely a Marie Kondo trick and one that I love. The contents of drawers can get so messy so quickly and using boxes as separators is a genius idea that keeps everything organized. You don't even need to purchase boxes for this task. You can just save up old packaging and Amazon boxes and create your own system. Some people prefer a more aesthetic look, so we'll buy matching boxes and dividers. But for me, reusing old packaging works just as well. Declutter books you won't read. I used to read a lot of classics when I was younger and I also rarely left a book unfinished. But I do remember one occasion where I simply couldn't get through a book. It was Daniel Deronda by George Eliot. After I got halfway through it, I put it down and never returned to it. Although I always intended to and so for years I kept it on my bookshelf. As I got busier and busier, I made less and less time to read fiction and suddenly I realised that I'd been holding on to my copy of Daniel Deronda for over a decade and every time I looked at it, I felt guilty that I hadn't finished it. That's when I realised that I needed to make peace with the fact that it was a book I didn't want to finish and it was better to declutter it and give it to someone who would enjoy it the way I couldn't. Get rid of old magazines. 
There's really no point in keeping hold of old magazines, unless you're going through them regularly or they make up part of a treasured collection. I personally don't see the point of print magazines as I find them wasteful and bad for the environment, so I try to avoid them. On the rare occasion I do pick up a free print magazine and I like an article, I just take a picture of the article on my phone so I can return to it when I want. Declutter Electronics Decluttering electronics can be a huge pain because you're not allowed to dispose of them in the bin. But if you just bite the bullet and figure out once and for all where and how to get rid of your electronic waste, the task won't feel so difficult and you won't end up with cupboards full of old hair dryers and CD players. Shops that sell electronic goods may take them. You may be able to find a website that will recycle electronic items. Your council might take them for a fee or you might be able to drop them off at the dump. Clean under your bed. Wherever you don't regularly tidy, things will accumulate and so make it a habit to clean under your bed, thus ensuring you stay on top of random socks, toys, dirt and whatever else may try and make a home there. Declutter sentimental items. Decluttering sentimental items can be difficult, but once you start and make it a habit, it becomes so much easier. There's nothing wrong with having and keeping sentimental items. I for one will never get rid of my first teddy bear. But the trouble comes when too many inanimate objects take on sentimental value, and over time the accumulation of all these things can lead to hoarding. Get rid of out-of-date toiletries. If you have lots of toiletries that have been hanging around your bathroom shelves for years, then roll up your sleeves and organise them. Use up samples. If you're prone to picking up a sample or two from the department stores, then keep them in a prominent space so you don't forget to use them up. Use up all your makeup and toiletries before replacing them. This was something I started doing as a result of my low buy no buy and it's so satisfying to be able to use up the last of a product before purchasing a replacement. In the past I had always bought the replacement before finishing off the original product and this meant that I inevitably moved on to the shiny new replacement before using up the original. Minimise your accessories Accessories don't take up that much space, so over time it can be easy to forget to declutter them, but tastes and styles change, so it's well worth going through your accessories and weeding out what you no longer want to wear, and remembering all the items you do want to keep. Think twice before purchasing an item. Impulse buying can be a real mistake. Did you really want that trinket displayed near the tills at Primark, or were you just bored and got carried away? Make it a habit to always question your purchasing decisions, even if something is on sale and you're afraid that you might lose out. Retailers prey on our FOMO and we can be rushed into making a decision, but take your time and although there might be a chance that you miss out on some items here and there, on the whole, over time, you'll save hundreds of pounds by being consistently more judicious. Use points cards. If you shop regularly at a certain supermarket or store, then pick up a points card if they offer one. You would have been purchasing items from those places anyway, so accumulating points as a result of that spending isn't really any added hassle. And then when it comes to the holidays, you can use it to help your budget go that much further. Make your bed. Making your bed every morning puts you in the right frame of mind to get your day off to a productive start. It's instantly calming as it transforms your bedroom with very little effort and you get a sense of accomplishment first thing in the morning. Buy quality not quantity. Having less items but of higher quality means you'll really enjoy the few items you allow into your life. Buy less and take care of your items. Minimalism means buying less and that gives you the time and space to look more closely at the items you already own. Perhaps there are a pair of shoes you absolutely love but the sole has worn down. Instead of throwing them away and purchasing a new pair, why not consider repairing them? This is a tip that one of my subscribers shared with me and I've taken the concept of repairing before replacing to heart. Shop your stash. Shopping my stash is one of my favourite things to do. Over the last year and a half, I've used so many backups, samples and clothes I'd put aside. It's been great to rediscover items that I had forgotten all about. Not only am I saving money, but I'm also getting value for money from the items that I already had. Avoid paper at all costs. I've always hated paper clutter and minimalism has taught me that there really is another way. I used to keep all important documentation in a large box which I dreaded going into every time it came to doing taxes or some such other important life admin. 
Once I began my minimalism journey, I sat down with that box one afternoon and organised everything. I digitised and uploaded what I needed and discarded things I didn't and within a few hours I'd reduced down that paperwork to two slim folders, one for my certificates and one for physical copies of documentation I'm required to keep. After that day, I've been adamant about keeping paper clutter to an absolute minimum. I will ask to be taken off mailing lists, opt for online bank statements and I'll insist that people email rather than send physical letters. Tackle your mail straight away. This habit is related to the previous one in that it helps keep paper clutter to a minimum. A lot of mail can be tackled straight away. It might be junk mail that can be put straight into the recycling or it could be a notice or reminder that you can note down immediately. I try to make it a rule to open all my mail in the hallway even before I've walked into my room and the things that need attention are put on my workspace to be dealt with in the next day or two. Create a home for everything. Having a designated place for all your items makes tidying up so much easier and faster. Always try and make a home for everything you own so you're not continually having to move objects around trying to find a place for things. Skip fashion trends. Skipping fashion trends that come and go means you'll save money. There's nothing wrong with indulging here and there if you're particularly taken by something, but be realistic about how long some of the more outlandish looks social media influencers are promoting will really stick around. And ask yourself if parting with your money and compromising wardrobe space is worth it. Know what flatters you. If you're looking to minimise your wardrobe, knowing what suits you allows you to look good and feel confident in the items you choose to keep and the items you decide to purchase. Seek out social media content that aligns with your values and goals. Having a good social media experience is really important for your mental health and to help cultivate habits you're looking to build. If you've made the decision to simplify and minimise your lifestyle, then following influences that promote that way of life will keep you motivated and will give you tips and inspiration. Talk about minimalism. Once you start decluttering and minimising, it can become a really addictive process as you free yourself from a number of constraints you never realised you had. So it's only natural that you would want to talk about it. You don't have to bore everyone to tears, but your good friends will indulge your newfound passion for minimalism. Declutter kitchen gadgets you don't use. You know how it can be. You're up late one night and catch an infomercial selling you a slicer that cuts vegetables five different ways and you buy the tool on impulse only to find you don't really need a slicer that cuts vegetables five different ways. Don't just hold on to kitchen gadgets for the sake of it. We all make bad purchasing decisions from time to time and if you're keeping items because you feel bad about the money you've already spent, then don't. Draw a line under it, get rid of the clutter and learn from past mistakes. Clean as you go. Minimalism means you have less and it's easier to keep things neat and tidy, but that doesn't mean it doesn't take work. Building in the habit of cleaning as you go means things don't pile up and become overwhelming. Incorporate morning and nighttime pickup rituals. A 5-10 to 10 minute tidy in the morning and at night time makes a world of difference to not only your space but also to how organised you'll feel. Put away your clothes as soon as you come home. I used to be terrible at doing this when I was younger and I have no idea why. My bedroom would become such a mess with my clothes strewn all over the place. But after getting into the habit of putting away my clothes as soon as I came home and realising what a difference those couple of minutes of effort made, I'm now a huge advocate for not procrastinating when it comes to this. Put away your bag and shoes in their designated spots. Similar to the previous point, do the same with your bag and shoes so they don't clutter up your space and you're not tripping over them. Don't buy fantasy clothes. Fantasy clothes are things such as floor-length gowns that you're unlikely to ever wear on a regular basis. These clothes, as pretty as they might be, are completely impractical and a waste of money and space. If you've got an occasion that you really want to wear something special to, then look into hiring out clothing appropriate for the event. Save a percentage of your income every month. When you become a minimalist, you inevitably save money because you're not buying as many things. Bank that extra money and put it towards something that will be an investment for your future. Meal plan. When it comes to minimalism, simplicity is the name of the game and meal planning ahead of time not only helps make life so much easier, it can also save you a lot of money. 
My mum is an expert meal planner. She organises most of the meals for our household of five people and spends roughly £400 to £500 pounds on groceries for the month. This means that the cost per meal comes to about £1, which is incredible value for money. Don't wash your clothes if they don't need it. If you've worn clothes for a few hours and they don't smell and you haven't sweated, then it's perfectly fine not to wash them. That way, you'll be helping the environment with less frequent laundry loads and you'll also be increasing the longevity of your clothing. Use comparison sites to ensure you're not overpaying for utilities. The big name energy companies will stealthily hike up their prices because they know that the majority of their customers don't want to deal with the hassle of changing suppliers. But in this day and age, changing suppliers to get a better value for money deal could not be easier. Use comparison sites like Uswitch, which makes the process pretty seamless. There are really good, independent and ethical energy companies out there with tariffs that are far better than the leading names. So do your research and switch over to a better deal. Have a work uniform. Having a set wardrobe for work makes life so much easier in the mornings. I have about five or six outfits that I wear on rotation to work every week. It's normally jeans, a comfortable long sleeve blouse or t-shirt, trainers and my regular outerwear appropriate for the current season. All the items are basic and neutral in colour and as I'm not concerned about looking fashion forward in my everyday life, this works perfectly well for me. Unsubscribe from newsletters. If you're tempted by products and deals in newsletters from retailers, then simply unsubscribe. Outlets are always trying to tempt us to buy one thing or another, but if you're truly committed to the minimalist lifestyle, then unsubscribe from newsletters, because if you don't see it, you don't know it exists, and you won't be tempted. Eat leftovers. Minimalism means reducing your waste and eating leftovers is a great way to do that. Make a note of what you have left over and make sure to eat it. This habit together with meal planning will reduce not only your food waste but will also save you a substantial amount of money. Try store brands. Speaking of saving money on food, try store brand items. You never know, you might like the store brand item over a name brand. I certainly have a variety of favourite straw brand options over name brand options and the former are invariably a lot cheaper than the latter. Don't overbuy food. This is another thing that can be avoided with good meal planning. Overbuying food and buying new food on impulse can lead to food waste. There's nothing wrong with experimenting but it's better to research beforehand what you want to try and how much of it you want to buy. Consider buying second hand. This is something that I've recently come round to. I've always been reluctant to buy second hand, but after a few positive experiences with buying items from friends and then using Facebook Marketplace, I've realised that I was being too cautious about the whole thing. People weren't out to fleece me. The products were great quality and also buying second hand is much better for sustainability and also my wallet. Stop keeping up with the Joneses. Minimalism means that you've actively chosen not to have an excessive number of material possessions and this in turn limits the number of opportunities you will have to compete with your peers over the things you own. It's incredibly freeing to disassociate yourself from the comparison trap that's all too easy to fall into. Play the minimalism game. I love the minimalism game and I played it back in December of 2019. The game requires you to declutter over the course of a month. On day one, you're asked to get rid of one item. On day two, it's two items. On day three, it's three items, etc, etc. By the end of the month, depending on how many days there are in the month you've chosen to play the game, you will have decluttered anywhere between 406 to 496 items. It's a really effective way of focusing your mind when assessing what things you do and don't want in your life. Minimise your cutlery to what you regularly use. There's really no need for multiple sets of cutlery. In a household, it becomes very obvious which sets of plates, glasses, bowls, etc. are the favourites. Just keep and use those regularly and get rid of the rest, which take up unnecessary space and are only used once in a blue moon. Respect non-minimalist habits of those you live with. This can be a difficult one for me. My enthusiasm for minimalism means that I want everyone to experience the benefits of that lifestyle. But the fact is that some people don't want to be a minimalist and that's completely fine, each to their own. It's important for minimalists to be respectful of non-minimalist friends and family and not try and impose their values on others. And so that brings me to the end of my list of 50 minimalist habits to try today. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like minimalism content, I'll link more relevant videos in the description below and also in the cards above. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all next week. Bye!